This is a GSXR 1000 rear shock. I think it's off a 2008. I don't recall. It came out of a parts bin. I don't much like the yellow color of it, so I'm going to fix that because there's nothing else yellow that's on my SV650. So now it's gold, which would be a better match for the front forks. We're going to upgrade that rear shock. We're going to put that onto the SV, eliminating the old shock that's on there, which is extremely bouncy, especially for somebody of my weight. I'm about uh, 220 pounds. And, uh, well, I just way over overweight for the uh, the bike's design. So we're going to change that thing out. That'll help a lot. This should handle a lot better when it's done. But for anybody that's putting on a rear shock, you would probably be putting on or swapping out your front end also. In my case, I have a GSXR front end that's on here, so that's already been taken care of. But what happens is the speedo drive doesn't fit. So the speedo drive needs to be relocated to the rear wheel. So for the sake of this video, we're going to be updating, upgrading the rear shock and the speedo drive at the same time. The speedo drive is going to be mounting on the rear wheel right down in here between the brake caliper and the wheel, so we'll get to that in a moment. But the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the wheel. And I'm not going to cover how to remove the wheel in this video because I've covered that in my chain swapping videos and I've done it twice already. So I'm going to put a little link on the bottom of this video to show you how to get the rear wheel on and off. I've got the bolts loose. In fact, you can see I pushed it through a little bit. And the bottom bolt is loose, but of course you can't get it out until it's free from the linkage, but we'll get to that in just a moment. I've got the bike jacked up with a jack underneath the motor just to take a little bit of weight off the swing arm. You see this way? It's still in the stand. It's not exactly loading up all of its weight onto the, uh, the stand. And the bike is stable. You know, it's not going anywhere. Make sure that everything is nice and solid where it's at. And I didn't jack up under something like the oil filter or the exhaust pipe. You don't want to do that. Make sure you get underneath something solid. I've also got a front stand on the bike here. That also helps to keep it secure. That's the reason why it's not falling down. Okay, now that we've got that far, we need to start removing some shock bolts. We're going to remove the top one first, and that's going to cause the swing arm to uh, drop on down. Once we get the swing arm dropped down, we should be able to remove the bottom bolt. No matter how much I bounce around the uh, rear swing arm and rear shock, I can't get the bottom shock bolt to clear the linkage. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove this one dog bone here. And it should be as easy as loosening this nut and pushing that bolt through. And then this should swing down and out of the way. And I shouldn't have to mess with this one at all. And if I do, I might have to just loosen it just a tad. We've got the dog bone swung down, as I said. We got the nut removed from there, and I just lightly tap the bolt on through. So currently the other dog bone is, is supporting the weight of the bike on the swing arm. And what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to lift up the middle of the bike just enough so that way we can get the rest of the shock out. And uh, once we get that far, we should be able to simply drop the new shock into place, providing that we make enough clearance up here in the battery compartment area, which should be as simple as removing this bolt and the one from the other side and dropping down the undertail by a few inches. So we'll get to that as soon as we finish up the bottom part here. The removal of the rear shock turned out to be a little more work than anticipated because it's going to have to come out through the top and the gas tank is in the way because the hinge that holds the gas tank on it allows you to flip it up for the SV so you can get to the air filter uh, actually clamps up against the battery and that's blocking the rear shock from coming out so we got to remove that next. So there's two bolts here for the gas tank, there's two bolts up there, uh, there's a fuel gauge sender, there's a fuel line, and there's a vacuum line. So those should be the only things that we should have to remove, and then the tank should come right on off of there, and then we can continue working on the rear suspension. Make sure that you have a fire extinguisher ready when you remove your gas tank, because you will leak a little bit of gas from the fuel line, and that's going to spit just a little bit. There's a vacuum line, there's the fuel gauge sender that we were talking about, and down below here you've got your battery, which is now loose because I removed those two bolts and you can see the rear shock right in below here so anyways we need to get this shock out and it's 
seems that pulling it up is the best way to do so. What I think what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up the undertail just a little bit more because it's going to give me a little bit more freedom to work the battery around and then pull that rear shock out because the new shock is actually a little bit bigger and needs to fall down in that same space. So we need to make a little more room for them. All right, I decided to remove the undertail from there just to give me a little more clearance. I pulled the battery out. That's probably a better idea that I do anyway because we're working that close to the battery and there's a lot of tools involved. And the last thing I want to do is I want to drop a tool or a bolt onto the battery, short something out, cause a fire, you know, burn my cells, make something just really bad happen. So, again, we pulled the undertail out just for that reason. Plus, it makes the camera angles or shooting this stuff a little easier to get to. But there's your top shock mount. Down there is the lower shock mount. So the shock, new shock, is going to mount into that position. So we're going to drop that into place right now, and we're going to throw some bolts into it real quick, so this way we can put the uh, bike back up on the rear stand. Now for the top of the shock, we're going to use the long SV bolt that we pulled out of the old shock. And for the bottom, we're going to use the uh, Gixxer bolt that was originally in the GSXR bike that this came off of. So we're going to drop that shock into place using the same hardware that uh, we had available to us. Okay, we've... We very carefully lowered the uh, GSXR shock into the rear of the SV650 here. We're trying to get the bolt hole lined up on the bottom because we're going to put that one in first. Because that one's a frustrating one with all the linkage and all the extra crap. The top one will go in real easy once we get that figured out. Now I got a feeling that we're going to have a little bolt clearance issue due to the um, SV dog bones under here not being spaced out quite as wide as the GSXR ones were. So that nut that's going to be on the end of the bolt it's probably going to be a little too thick, so we might have to grind it down a little bit just to make it fit. Nope, I was incorrect. Everything down here fits perfectly. The rear shock linkage uh, and the shock itself all clear the dog bones on both sides. This one actually has a, like a millimeter and a half. I can slip a couple business cards in between there. of just enough clearance to, uh, to make this all work out. We're going to start snugging these bolts up. We're going to put the dog bones back on. Try to get those snugged up. We're going to tighten up the bolts on the top. And uh, we're going to start reassembling some stuff. Rear shock is in. And uh, it was pretty close. I mean, really close tolerances. Just for example, around the swing arm, around the spring, there's like less than a millimeter of clearance the whole way around. I could just slip a sheet of paper in between there. And uh, it's good. Everything's working good. There's nothing rubbing. I'm using the rear swing arm stand again, so I got the weight off the uh, middle of the bike. Next thing left is to get the undertail put in. And uh, once I get the undertail put in, we can figure out where the battery clearance is going to find itself. And uh, we'll get the rest of the parts worked out accordingly, based on what we have fitting together and what type of clearance issues we come up with. Okay, we got the undertail put back in. I dropped the battery in to see what kind of clearance we got. And uh, right off the bat, it fit really, really well. It did have to come down, oh, probably about you know, two finger widths. I figure about an inch and a half. So I'll put a little spacer in here and put a longer bolt through it. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And the shock is not actually touching the battery. There's a couple millimeter clearance in between the two, but that really wouldn't matter. Because as I understand, the shock reservoir is going to move away from the battery when the shock is compressed. So we don't need to worry about it. I fixed a couple other little things underneath here. I had a bad solder joint on my negative battery terminal. So we resoldered that back on there. And that's nice and solid now. That's working good. So I think we can start reassembling the tank and make sure that the tank hinge clears all this. And if it does not, we're going to have to cut it off. We drop the tank on, and there's a little bit of a clearance issue down here where the battery and the shock clears up with the tank hinge and the battery um, pad, I guess you could call it. This usually presses against the battery to hold the battery in position, but because the shock is in the place now where the, uh, the space usually is, this is going to have to come off. So we're going to have to take the tank back off, and we're going to cut it. We're just going to zing this thing right off. Not going to do anything too fancy. It looks like it's rather thin sheet metal. I could probably clip it off with some tin snips and then just go ahead and chamfer the edge so there's no sharp edges to get cut on. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap a couple zip ties around the battery just to make sure that it doesn't bounce all over the place, put the tank back on, bolt everything back together, and go for a ride, because that's all there was to it. All right, we cut off that little pad support bracket that was underneath there, and now the hinge fits under there real cleanly. We've got lots of room under the seat, and this is good. This is something that bothered me before. There was never enough room to put on all the wires. I don't know how this factory wiring was originally supposed to be because the guy who used to own this thing really made a mess out of it. But I got everything working after uh, he made the mess out of it. It's just uh, 
It's not the most organized thing, but now I've got room underneath there, and now the wires and crap don't hang down underneath the bike. So this is looking good. This is looking really good. I'm happy. We're going to start bolting down the tank. We're going to hook the hoses and wiring back up to it and uh, start piecing tail back together. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to come up with some type of a standoff or a support to bolt all this back together. And we're going to wrap some zip ties around that battery. So I found some bolts that will fit up in here. And the gap that we're looking for is about an inch and a half. So I made these little inch and a half spacers. And I don't like the color of them, but we'll work that out later. And uh, we'll get these bolted together. And at that point, we're going to go over everything, just make sure everything's tight, put the back wheel on, hook up the uh, Speedo, and we're done.